Donald Studi may have killed as many as 70 women over the course of three decades, each time throwing their bodies into a 100-foot well. For 45 years, Lucy Studi told anyone who would listen that her father had murdered scores of young women and buried them with the help of his children. No one believed her. The property in the wooded hills north of Thurman, Iowa. Woman says as a child, she helped her father dispose of bodies of young women that he'd killed. Cadaver dogs have now pinpointed suspected human remains at the spot she identified in a remote stretch of western Iowa. She recalled how her father, Donald Dean Studi, would direct her and her siblings to help him as he transported bodies using a wheelbarrow in the warmer months and a toboggan in winter. He would just tell us we had to go to the well, and I knew what that meant, Studi said. Every time I went to the well or into the hills, I didn't think I was coming down. I thought he would kill me because I wouldn't keep my mouth shut. As he dumped the bodies into the well, they would pile dirt and lie on top, she said. If further investigation confirms the story, it could show that her father was one of the most prolific known serial killers in American history. Deputies have been in touch with Donald Studi's daughter for the past year. She alleges her dad, who's been dead since 2013, killed 50 to 70 people over three decades. She was joined at the scene of the investigation by Fremont County Sheriff Kevin Astrope, two deputies, a dog handler, and his two dogs. With love tattooed across the knuckles of one hand and hate across the other, Donald Dean Studi is suspected by law enforcement authorities to have lured women, most of them sex workers or transients picked up in nearby Omaha, Nebraska, to his five acres of forested hills and farmland before killing them. Studi said her father not only made sure his children knew what he was doing, but forced them to help with the burials. She remembered him saying of one victim, the bee deserved it. Most of the women had dark or darkish hair, she said. All were white and she guessed that most, except for a 15-year-old runaway, were in their 20s or 30s. The cadaver dogs, trained to detect human remains, went directly to the spots where Studi had said since she was a child that bodies had been buried. They went without being led by their handler, Jim Peters, who runs Samaritan Detection Dogs, and did Friday search pro bono. We did bring a couple cadaver dogs. Cadaver dogs looked in there and, uh, or, you know, looked around the area, and they did indicate in the area. I'm not going to say it was right over the well or where, but they did indicate in the area. One of the dogs signaled likely human remains by barking, the other by sitting still where remains were potentially located. The dog scented remains at four locations, with the last getting multiple hits where bodies might be buried. Today told me there is the odor of human decomposition in the area, said Peters. More work needs to be done to confirm that. I feel pretty good about what I saw from the dogs. It's hard for me to believe that two dogs would hit in the exact same places and be false. According to the dogs, this is a very large burial site. The next step would be to use sonar where the land allows it, then dig the sites to search for human remains, Peters and investigators said. The FBI and Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation are also investigating with Fremont County. Officials will search the identified Lost Hills area with other cadaver dogs and tools like metal detectors and ground-penetrating radar in the coming weeks. Many of the victims were buried in the 90 to 100 foot well, clothed and wearing jewelry, Studi said. She said her father kept gold teeth as trophies. All I want is to get these sites dug up and to bring closure for people and to give these women a proper burial, said Studi. Studi said her father, quick to anger and routinely drunk, would stab and shoot people, but his preferred method of killing was smashing or kicking in the heads of the women inside a trailer in which they lived on the property. It is unclear whether Lucy's siblings have been cooperative with the authorities. Her brother died by suicide at 39. Studi said over the years she told her story to teachers, priests and law enforcement all over Iowa and Nebraska trying to get something done. She said the trauma of an abusive upbringing and being forced to take part in covering the bodies won't settle until the truth is told. No one would listen to me, Studi said. The teacher said family matters should be handled as a family, and law enforcement has said they couldn't trust the memory of a child. I was just a kid then, but I remember it all. All we have is a woman came forward and told us a story about bodies and a well. My father was a lifelong criminal and murderer, Studi said. She said Donald Studi, who used multiple aliases, Donald Studi spent time in prison in Missouri in the 1950s for petty larceny, and that he was jailed in Omaha in 1989 for a drunken driving offense.
the sheriff said that he had routinely been in trouble with the police, who never went to the trailer the family lived in alone because they were wary of him. Donald Studi was a perpetually indebted gambler. She said her father also stole from many of the mechanic, trucking, and other jobs he held over the years. Studi said her father had two wives who had died, and he had tried on at least two occasions to take his own life. According to police records, one of his wives died by strangling herself with an electrical cord. The other shot herself in the head. Asked what she felt about her dad now, Studi said, I don't feel anything for my father. Nothing at all. I wanted justice when my father was alive, but he's gone. I just want for the family some closure and a proper burial. Studi is being treated as a witness and not a suspect in any crime, the sheriff said. The sheriff says the scene off Green Hollow Road is not a crime scene because officials haven't found bodies or bones, only hits from cadaver dogs. Fremont Deputy Mike Wake said he grew up in the area and the town was rife with rumors about Donald Studi. Coming up, we just always kind of heard that, he said. Well, then when Lucy Studi called me, I just went out there and looked. The cadaver dogs picked up multiple hits at the fence with the neighboring property, where Studi said more bodies were buried. The sheriff said he would get a warrant to further search there if needed. Meanwhile, multiple agencies are searching records on Donald Studi and missing persons to see whether any match Lucy Studi's description of the women, as well as at least two male victims, one in his 40s and one in his 20s, whom she says were buried in the well. The sheriff says Donald Studi and his family are not tied to this property off Green Hollow Road anymore. Many of the women, according to Studi, were slender, on the shorter side with cropped dark, dirty blonde or dark red hair. Police said that if those murdered were transient or sex workers, it is possible that they were never reported missing. For Lucy Studi, the search by the cadaver dogs finally seemed to be bringing her nearer to having her story believed and to finding her own closure. As she stood on the ridge watching the dogs move from place to place, she said, this is what I've been telling people for 45 years.